Welcome back to the podcast, TNT, The Naked Truth with Claire Jefford. I am your host. And here today, we are going to be talking about the top five in my interior design Facebook group over the last 30 days. So basically, these episodes, I will be doing the top, I go through the top 10. So I get insights in my group, Interior Design Business Strategies. If you're not already there, make sure that you are. It's a private Facebook group. You'll be asked three questions when you join. Answer the three questions. It's mandatory you answer in order to get approved or else you will be declined. We need to make sure you are a designer. We can see your website. And uh, basically, we have a lot of fabulous conversations in this group. It's a really tight knit community uh, that we have on Facebook. And I'm really proud of it. And I I love my tribe. Excuse me. And so I decided, you know, what a great episode it would be and probably a shorter episode, but don't quote me on that because I know I can talk (laughs) quite a lot on sharing the top uh, the top posts within the group. So what gets what what gets the most eyeballs? What gets the most comments? The most traction? Uh, because if if my group is talking about it, my group is excited about it, or if my group has got something to say, then I'm sure that you would also be interested in listening to what it is. And heck, I'm sure many of you are in my fabulous tribe. So thank you again for being here. And this is going to uh, basically have me looking at my phone while I'm here chatting with you on the podcast and on my YouTube channel. And I'm going to go through some of the most popular, which I already have written down some of those here with me today. And uh, I just wanted to do a reminder that uh, if you're not already, if you haven't checked out my website, www.clairejeffer.com, make sure you check that out. And I'd love to see you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I have two, but I'm talking about this one, shouting out for Claire Jefford specifically. That's my coaching channel. So right now, if you're watching on YouTube, hello. And you can always catch uh, some of my episodes, maybe not all of them, but some of the episodes I will be repurposing into YouTube videos. So if you prefer a video, then you know where to find me now. And uh, what we'll do actually is we're going to start off with... Uh, a lady who posted in the group, and this was a post that, uh, I don't know if I can see how many reactions, oh yeah, and tell me on the previous page, sorry, bear with me a second. So this this post had nearly 2,000 views, uh, 184 likes, and 96 people commented on this. So far, that's so far, so that could change. And basically what it is, this is a really good lesson for all of us guys um, in the industry, And there was, um, this lady happens to work in a showroom and there was uh, a client that came in and wanted to do some work with, uh, you know, obviously renovating their home. And basically the gist of it is, is that this woman continuously, the client, like the client continuously insulted the, um, the lady who was working here as the, as the rep for the store. And, uh, just being blatantly rude, telling her she was stupid telling her, is she actually a trained designer? Or no, I guess the client herself, sorry, was a trained designer. So, you know, if you're a trained designer and you're going in and you're telling someone that they're stupid and they don't know what they're doing, then why do you need their help in the first place, right? Um, you know, so just, just, just basically just continually giving some examples of how this woman was very disrespectful. And when she was trying to give, you know, her advice and say, you know, why don't you try this? The woman was cutting it down saying, that's a dumb idea. Why would you even suggest it? Um, But the interesting thing is, is that the woman also said that there was no other showroom in the area that wanted to work with her. So she had to kind of come out of town a little bit. (laughs) I think that's a little bit of a red flag right off the top. So obviously my tribe being as fabulous as you are, a lot of people commenting saying, you know what? You do not deserve to be treated like this. You know, this should have been stopped in its tracks from early on if she was so kind of belligerent from the start. Uh, You know, her attitude was ridiculous. Uh, unbelievable is what some people are saying. Um, someone said here, you know, they would have stopped her straight away and, and asked her to leave the shop. I mean, uh, the, the lady's boss, I guess, wasn't around because she had said afterwards kind of what had happened in the lady's boss said, oh my gosh, I would have had that lady out in her ear so fast sort of thing, kicked her to the curb. So basically the gist of this is, is that, you know what, no matter who people think 
they are and how fancy and how special and that maybe as clients you need them more than they need you, you do not deserve to be treated badly. You deserve to be treated with respect just like you would treat your clients, suppliers, vendors, uh, trades, you know, with the same respect. So just know that you do not need to put up with this. I mean, if this was a client and I had this client and I was at their house, um, you know, and they were speaking to me like that, you know, I would say, um, you know, I don't know if this is going to work. You know, this isn't really how I normally uh, work with clients. We, we have a very mutually respectful uh, relationship that we benefit, uh, we value one another, sorry. And, uh, you know, if you're going to continue to speak to me this way, then, you know, I'm not the designer for you. So I think it's important that you remember, guys, you 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 need to have self-respect. You do, you you know, we all deserve, you know, to, that, that self-respect, that respect from others uh, in terms of, you know, building these relationships and just being freaking, you know, common sense and being a nice human being. So if someone's going to be an a-hole to you, you do not have to put up with that. So just know that straight away. And this may have been a little bit trickier because the lady was a rep in a showroom. Um, you know, but I would have probably excused myself and said, you know, if you could just give me a couple of minutes, I would have found my supervisor, my boss and said, you know, this, I'm just being totally belittled here. And this woman does not want to take any of my advice. And she's calling me stupid. You know, so you do not need to put up with that. So do not put up with that from anybody. I don't care how much money you're getting paid. You just still n do not deserve to be treated like crap. So that's, that's number one. Okay. Number one. <laughs> and I'm very passionate about that because, you know, if you can't be nice to people, you don't need bad people in your life, even in your personal life. You know, if you want to extend it to that, if you have friends that are negative and putting you down and saying, gosh, why are you doing what you're doing? This is more of a hobby. It's not really a business. And those people are not going to lift you up. They're going to bring you down and uh, they are going to make you feel bad if you listen to them. So, you know, and what, what are they doing that's so much better? And who are they to judge you? Right. So don't take crap like that from anybody. All right. So number two, we have a lady here who was looking for some opinions in terms of consultation fees and basically had, uh, had a client who I think they'd worked with before and um, they were continue, they were still working with them. And they were talking about a, a consultation fee. Is this a consultation fee for something here? Sorry about the, I just don't, it's kind of long post. But the gist of it is, is that basically the uh, gentleman had said to her, you know, oh, I usually, the consultation I understand is usually for free. Oh my gosh, this is like such a debate. Uh, the lady had said here that over the phone, she replied with a very professional email and responding why she doesn't do consultations for free. Uh, the first meeting is two hours. It's a paid for consultation. Uh, so you guys, if you're not aware, I do have a whole uh, series on this on my YouTube channel. Um, it's a playlist for consultations, the initial consultation. Should you charge? How do you tell your clients? Uh, um, or sorry, what, what's in my bag? Like, what do I bring to the consultation? Uh, you know, just, just the process of the consultation itself. So there's always a lot of kind of questions around, you know, should you charge for the consult, especially if you're new? So if you go and watch those videos, you'll, you'll see, I'll, I'll say it a little bit here as well, but you know, I never did charge initially for a, I, it wasn't even a consultation. Initially it was, uh, you know, a meet and greet that I would do when I first started because I was nervous and I didn't really know, uh, you know, what, um, what to expect. And I didn't know what I was supposed to offer. And, you know, I was new and school taught you nothing as you <laughs> most of you know, like in terms of business and dealing with clients. So, um, so I would say, you know, in that it, it wasn't long story before I then realized that, you know, people will take advantage of you if you, if you go to their home and they're going to start asking you questions, even if you say you're just there to see if you're a good fit, maybe you have a folder for them to go through and you can tell them how you can help. Inevitably people will probably ask questions. The only other time I know people do not charge for consult necessarily is if they're so high end that they're interviewing their client. And so they're like, we'll come out and we'll see you. And they're basically qualifying them to see if they're a client that they would work with. So I say, you know, if you've got someone who's questioning the consultation, it's not necessarily a red flag straight away. I know that everyone's very quick uh, in the groups when we see, you know, different different posts to, to say about, oh, this is a red flag. But I think it's important to note that 
are, we do this every day, right? And I mean, people, the general public do not, they do not always do renos. They do not work with designers. They don't know the ins and outs. They don't understand the value we bring. They don't, uh, you know, know what the fees involved are going to be. So it's our job, first of all, to educate them. So not just jump on it saying, this is a red flag, go away, or, you know, leave, stay well away. I really want to emphasize that, uh, you know, because it is our job to educate the client, let them know, you know, so you, you say, you know, oh, you know, just as this lady had said here, she explained, you know, the consult isn't free, but I don't also like to back, go, go into too much detail, backtrack or, um, you know, because I don't need to explain too much as to why my consultation is paid for. I just let them know that, you know, that's the way I work. That's the way I work. I have paid consultations. I book out two to four weeks in advance. Uh, we do require payment before we take the booking just to confirm it in our calendar. And then once you're confirmed in our calendar, then we will send you out, you know, our pro the, next, the next step of the process, which if you're not familiar already, I do have my Rock the Initial Consultation Processes package. And this has been huge for a lot of designers. I know it's been very helpful for a lot of you out there giving me great feedback on that. It's included in my bundle which is a three-in-one, which also includes a letter of agreement and a starter pack, a PowerPoint presentation of about 50 pages, I believe it is, with things to consider before you start your business. So if you're struggling with a consultation, if you're new to the business, absolutely, this is mandatory, I would say. You'd have, I wish I had this when I started. So when I rock my initial consultation, you know, one of the things that I do, like I said, I have all of those processes up front. I let the clients know that, you know, we do require payment, that once you pay, you know, we just had two book yesterday, then we sent them out the next, you know, step in the process, which is a questionnaire that we link to on my website, and we want them to complete it. And we also ask them if they want to send photos of their home. Like, so there's a whole process. So for me, the consultation, some people call it a design working session. I know my friend Sherry Bruno out with um, Get It Together in Calgary, uh, Canada, that that's what she had initially um, that's what she calls hers, the design working session. So I love that. As I will say to clients too, you know, this, this is like a design work session. Like we are working here. Like I will give you ideas. Again, it depends on how you work. It's going to depend on the type of consultation that you offer. But that's what I really want you to understand that if you're going to have consultations, you're going to be there, you're going to be offering value, then you need to make sure that you are also, um, you know, having Oh my gosh, you know what just happened? <laughs> this is the naked truth. I'm filming this as well. My bloody SD card just ran out of memory. So anyway, it is what it is. I'm still here with you on the podcast and it's recording. So that's great news. Great news. Okay, so call it what you will. But uh, the general consensus is, you know, people are saying, you know, you're giving out a lot of advice here, you should be charging people don't do free consultations anymore. Um, and I even think 250 is too low for a consult. Uh, you know, I like, I like the consultation rate to be higher than my hourly rate. So I charge $600 for a two hour consultation right now. And, um, my hourly rate is 195 for design services. Uh, so yeah, someone else saying they charge for the consults, they send the invoice, they ask for payment before the meeting. And that's really, that's what, what, what you do. You, you, because clients will respect you more. The more you have those processes in place, the more they will, um, you know, understand, oh, okay, yeah, she does have process. She does have, you know, steps that we have to follow. And and the good clients like that, right? I love when I can follow steps and I understand what's coming up next and what's needed next. And then you got to follow through, right? You got to follow through. That's the important thing. So the whole, there's always a big debate. Someone says never free, ask them if they work for free, <laughs> that sort of thing. So, you know, but again, you have to figure out how, what is your business? Uh, how is your business set up? What's your business model? But I recommend that you do not do free consultations unless you are at that point where you are now interviewing the client and you only take on projects that are $100,000 plus sort of thing. And you want to see if they're a good fit for you. All right. So that's number two. Comment below and let me know what your thoughts are on that. Do you charge for your initial, initial consultation? And while we're at it, why don't you throw in there how much you charge? Add that here, comments here. Uh, what else have we got? Okay, so I've also got, uh, oh, this was a good one, actually. So someone was asking how you dress for the consultation. And this was uh, got a lot of comments, a lot of comments on this one. Let's have a little look here. So yeah, we've got uh, one and a half thousand people saw this, 189 people liked it, and we've got 98 comments. So let's see what people were saying. You know, the, basically the lady was asking, she usually wears, you know, slacks, a nice top, sometimes a cardigan, wondering if I should be wearing a suit. Um, 
you know, so you've got people that are saying, you know, sometimes they dress casual, some, you know, depending on where they live too. Sometimes they're in hotter climates. A lot of people are saying that they like to wear dresses. Uh, some people are saying it depends on your clientele. So again, yeah, I mean, for me, uh, I'm not really a suit girl. I wore suits when I worked for Ford in HR many moons ago, <laughs> but now I do not wear suits. And um, I, but I will look smart. You know, I don't usually wear jeans. I will not usually wear jeans at all. I don't know if I ever have to a consultation. I will wear nice pants. I will wear a dress shirt, a cardigan. I usually put on some jewelry. I have makeup done. You know, I'm not over the top fancy because that's just not my brand. So you have to remember that you have to always go with what is your brand, right? What is your brand? What do you stand for? What is it that you're, you're um, what is your messaging? So, so make sure it all falls into place with that. Uh, yeah, so someone else saying it depends on your clients, it depends on what your market is, a nice top and some slacks would be appropriate for most people. Oh my gosh, slacks. My grandma used to call them slacks. I haven't heard that word used for a very long time. Hands up if you're you still call them slacks. I don't know. I would say dress pants, but love you all. Uh, okay, someone says, says that they do wear jeans and a sweater or a nice top um, because, oh, and cowboy boots. And that's their trademark. So there you go. So wearing uh, cowboy boots. Uh, you know, again, if that's, if that's how your, if that's your, I love that. That's her trademark. I think that's great. Um, so think about that, right? So I know some, some, some designers I know are all about their jewelry, a lot of bling, and then their clients are typically drawn to that. And they want to have some bling, a little more glamour in their design. And so the way that you dress really does, uh, you know, say a lot about you and it can say a lot about your design. Uh, designs. As I say, I'm a little more casual. Doesn't mean I can't be fancy pants, obviously, but you do what you feel comfortable in. And, you know, because if you're not comfortable and you go and see a client, you know, you don't want to be uncomfortable. Someone here is saying that they sometimes they have a look and see what the what client the client likes in terms of colors and 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 uh, designs when they've, you know, done that little bit of a process like I do in my rock the consultation, and then maybe they'll wear like a similar color. So if they say their favorite color is blue, maybe they'll show up in blue. So that's interesting. Never really thought about that. Uh, someone else says that they're updating their dress code. They've gotten a little more casual over the years, but they do a lot of booties and cool shoes, dark jeans and nice tops. People find it more approachable. So that's, that's a good point too, right? So again, this is your brand. Is your brand approachable? Are you, um, you know, easygoing, or are you a little more tightened up in terms of your personality and how you dress? So lots of good things there. As I said, if you're not in my group, this, these are some really great comments. A lot of people, obviously, this affects everybody. So these kind of posts always do quite popular because we all want to know how we're going to dress for a, uh, a consultation. Uh, be you, be stylish, someone says. That's all. I like that. And someone was funny and says, dress like... <laughs> dress like Elton John. Well, again, it depends on your clientele. Maybe. You never know. <laughs> depends how, how wacky and, uh, uh, you know, how, how fun, how fun and flamboyant you want to be out there. So, but yeah, a lot of people are saying actually that they wear jeans and a nice top. So maybe I should pull out my jeans. All right. And again, yeah, where you're located. So there's a good one. There's a good one. So love to know how you dress for the initial consultation. And moving on from the initial consultation and your dress wear, uh, I'm going to move to somebody who posted asking about uh, their tile installer. This is something that happens quite often with trades. And the tile installer, installer apparently warned them off a specific type of tile that they wanted to use, to warned the client off of it that the designer had suggested and said that uh, this type of tile, which in this situation was a penny tile, penny round tile, in a common use spot where heavy people, they may need to be more, uh, may need, hang on, let me see. He warned me off penny tile in such a common use spot where people may be less than careful. He said, even though we use a sealer, the smell can get right in there. And this designer had not heard of any issue with penny tile. And basically most of the comments were saying, this is crazy. Like, what is he talking about? They've got penny tile. What kind of smell? We use it all the time. This is a first, never heard of that. So basically most people are saying this is BS, right? So this can happen quite often with contractors, uh, if, if depending on how well you know your contractor or an installer for tile, or uh, if you're looking, if you want to do something different, and I mean, I wouldn't say penny round is overly complicated. It's not like you're asking them to cut up pieces of tile and do an intricate pattern, but Sometimes if 
tilers or installers are not comfortable or they haven't done something before, then chances are that they may try to turn your you or your client off of that sort of idea because they're not comfortable with it and they're not familiar with it. So it's really important that you know you know, having these conversations. And, and in this, I would imagine that the designer is making suggestions and then the clients may be going to their contractor. They're not managing the project, the designer in this situation. So, you know, then the contractor has their views and they're saying one thing and the con- client's not sure and they're they're loving what the designer chose, but now they're concerned because the contractor brought this up and you know, anything's going to come back at you if, if down the line it does... <laughs> give off these smells or or whatever it is that, that the contractor said that the issue was. So just be aware of that with your contractors and your trades and know, um, you know, say to them, hey, this is what I'm suggesting. Maybe say it, uh, if it's your trade, maybe say it you know, recent right now we're doing steam in my bathroom. And I said to my contract, I'm using Mr. Steam. Shout out there to Mr. Steam. Thank you so much to Martha and her team there. And uh, we are, my contractor has never used Mr. Steam. So I, I said to him, hey, you know, um, this is what I'm proposing. I'm going to send you the specs. And he said, okay, I've never used it. This will be interesting. But he didn't say, oh, I won't do it, um, you know, or try to warm me off it. And the great thing is, and I don't know if he has previously, if someone else maybe has a a previous client has mentioned it. But the great thing is, is that now that we're using it, and he's going to install it, and he's going to be familiar with it, is that hopefully he will encourage if he likes, you know, again, they have to like it's like us, I guess, if if there's certain client um, vendors that we maybe have bad luck with, or, um, you know, fabrics or something, obviously, we're going to let our client know. But it's really the importance of making sure you have that communication with your installers beforehand. So they know that, hey, this might be something they're going to recommend, um, or that you're going to recommend. Is it possible? What are the drawbacks? What do I need to know about it? And, you know, if you're not comfortable installing it, maybe I need to find someone else who is, right? We had a very similar situation with a friend who was a client and we were doing a backsplash. We were doing their kitchen. We did a 3D design rendering for them for their main floor, redesigned their kitchen, blew out a wall and basic, uh, two, two walls actually. And I had then helped her put together her finishes and I picked this beautiful tile. It wasn't one like that you would normally um, see. It had a beautiful little design in it with some, it was white, but then I had like these little blue, um, almost like fish scale um, design within them but kind of made a flower. The I'm just saying what the shape is. It's kind of hard to, <laughs> to, to say over when I without seeing it and showing you. But anyway, she came back at me after and said, oh, we decided to go with the subway tile because the tiler said that that was going to be a lot more money, a lot more, you know, labor to, to install. And, and, and maybe it would have been, I mean, I, I mean, he's the expert, but I don't really think a, I mean, it was on a, it was on a, a, a pre- uh, fab like a mesh piece so it wasn't like you were doing all of the pieces separately and uh the other thing is it's a backsplash like this wasn't a huge kitchen it's not like we were doing like a whole floor you know so for me I would rather have the price be a little bit I'd rather splurge there in those and I would encourage my clients to splurge in situations like that because you know if if that's going to be the star of the show and be something really different. I mean, her backsplash looks nice. It's a subway tile. It's in there. It's got a little bit of a a strie in it. It's nice. But would the other one have been like a wow factor? Absolutely. And that's why your clients are hiring you. So just know who you're working with and, um, you know, talk to them about the product, maybe before you're going to mention it to a client. If you have, if you have that ability and it's not someone else's contractor that are dissuading the client from using that particular product. And lastly, The most popular post in my group is from me, and I'm basically talking about using video for your business because we often see posts in the group with people asking how to market their business. People saying, I don't know how to get clients, or I'm not getting good clients, or clients who are quibbling about my fee, or clients who are shopping me. So I just said, listen, I know that not everyone will like my answer to this, and yes, I am a broken record. If you know me and you know if you see me on video, that's probably where you've seen me other than the podcast or in my group. And I know not everyone liked the answer. I said, but it is really uh, I, I, like 100% guaranteed. I would put this in writing as guaranteed that if you are consistent in creating video across your social media platforms, you have videos on your websites, you're putting yourself out there, you're offering great value with no expectations, and you're willing to be patient, you will get clients. This is the best marketing and it's also free. 
right? You don't pay for Facebook. You don't pay for Instagram, like unless you're going to sponsor your, you know, get spun to your sponsored ads. Uh, you know, you can just go out there, put up a video. YouTube is free, right? Everything is free. Embed it on your, do a YouTube video, embed it on your website. It's free. I do get a bee in my bonnet. Not really a bee in my bonnet, but I'm just so passionate about video because it's transformed my business like crazy. And it's been able to help me manage clients' expectations. It's been able for, uh, to allow clients to, or potential clients to understand what I'm about, who I am, whether they're going to like me even before I walk through the door. And by the time they hire me, by the time I walk through the door, honestly, I'm a hugger. Okay, you guys, if you guys know me, you met me in person, I am a hugger. And a lot of times by the end of the consult, we're hugging, if not as we walk through the door, because they're like, oh my gosh, you know, I've been following you for six months and uh, I love your videos, you know, that sort of thing. And it's a lot less of a sell when you're on the phone. I mean, I've had plenty of times where I've been on the phone and I say, okay, I'm going to, because as of my follow-up from the initial phone call, I say, okay, I'm going to send you uh, a couple of uh, follow-up email. There's going to be links to some videos. And though I had one client specifically, I remember who said, oh, you don't need to send me that. I, my wife has watched all of your videos. That's why we're hiring you. We love you already. So it's, it's not a hard sell. It's not like they're necessarily going, okay, I'll call you back. I'm getting a few more quotes. No, they've been following me for a long time already. They've been seeing my videos or they landed on my website. I had things that maybe other designers did not have videos and they got to know me and who I am. So I cannot, cannot, cannot uh, stress this enough. And the reason why most people fall down when it comes to video is that they're not patient, right? They're not patient. They worry about what they'll look like. I mean, right now, even though my camera just died, <laughs> the YouTube video, I did not change my shirt for the previous video and podcast that I just recorded, you know, and I thought, shall I, shan't I? I don't even think I put lipstick on. I didn't refresh my lipstick. Uh, you know, I'm just doing it because if I keep making these excuses and I say, oh, I haven't got the right equipment and oh, I haven't, I'm not looking good or I don't know what to wear, then I won't do it. And it's the same with you. Does this sound familiar? Is this resonating with you? Right? So the other thing is, is uh, what do you require to do video? So I think at this point I had seen something or heard something and, and there were, people were saying, this is what you need to make video. And, you know, it was a list of some of equipment and no, 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 no. Okay. Honestly, what you need to do video is one thing. And I'm telling you right now, you're either holding it in your hand, you're listening to me with it right now, or it's very close by. It's your phone. That's all that you need. Okay. The IGTV video that I did when I shared this, so go and check out my IGTV video. If you go, I'm on Claire Jefford. That's on Instagram. I'm wearing a bathing suit in my, <laughs> in the graphic that I posed. I'm holding a selfie stick. I've got the ocean of Mexico in behind me. And I said, interior designers, stop trying to be fancy and just do it. Um, so this obviously got a lot of comments from people, maybe because I was in my bathing suit. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but, you know, even on my HG, on my IGTV, sorry, um, video. And, you know, I just, uh, even that video. So that video, I was filmed in front of a window with no microphone and no makeup. Okay, so I don't always worry about I uh, don't worry about judgment. Uh, I just want to share my message. And you know, you guys, if you guys know me, you'll know that I, I'm a big fan of Gary V. And, and Gary V is like, you know, stop worrying about other people's opinions. And sure, like, we all want people to like us, we don't want to look like a fool and whatever. But who cares? Okay, the first time I posted on Facebook Live, because of course, Claire doesn't just do a Facebook Live very first time ever as it's introduced and rolled out into Facebook sitting in her office. No, she is with clients and saying, can I interview you? I was sideways, not once, but twice I held the phone wrong. Okay. You can't look more of an ass than that. And I didn't care. My clients were cool with it. And I was like, oh, well, here we go. Keep going. You know, so, and also if you don't get a lot of views or you don't get many comments, just remember people may not always comment, but people are watching. I have clients who have contacted me, even clients now that I know are on Instagram, um, on Facebook, and I can, I can see, especially on Instagram, when they're following me on a story, they may not say anything, but they're watching every single one of my stories, you know? So, I mean, you're staying top of mind. People are getting to know you. Um, you know, if people leave a crappy comment, oh my God, I've had crappy comments on YouTube before, crazy comments, uh, you know, and I just brush them off and go, okay, well, that person's obviously... <laughs> you know what? I mean, it says more about the person than it does about me. If someone's going to take the time to watch your video and then put a crappy comment on it about how you look or what you're doing, 
that's a, that person's an a-hole, right? Okay. So that's all I want to say about, well, no, it's not all I want to say about that. I have more to say. So anyway, so I just want to say that obviously I have a, a course, right? Video for profits is a course that I have. And I'm not just sharing this to plug that course. The course is way undersold. It should be one of my biggest sellers because of everything that it, it provides, all of the helpful information, the who, what, when, where, and how of how to do video. It's transformed not only my career, um, but people like Wendy Woloschuk, who's another very good friend of mine, she was one of the very first people to purchase that course. And she took the bull by the freaking horns. She was doing Facebook Live every day, which you do not need to do. Again, don't feel like, oh my gosh, I don't, can't do daily. What would I talk about? Don't worry about that. I give you a ton of topics in the course that you can talk about. But there's the point is, is just do it. I mean, we're in 2020. How often are you scrolling through a feed on Instagram or Facebook or somewhere and you do not see video? Because if you're not doing video, you are going to be left behind. And, and that is 100%. If you are local, I do have some friends, okay, so I'm going to go back on my what I just said, but only on this one very small percentage of people out there, um, you know, that are, are, are marketing them, not even marketing themselves, but just really word of mouth, word of mouth, word of mouth. Um, I shouldn't say a small percentage there, but you know, why not just do the video, hit the button, you're on site, you're at a client's house, you have something to say. Behind me, I have like, you know, a ton of fabric books, paint swatches, I can pull out, do a video really quickly on a lot of stuff. Okay. So I don't recommend that you start off with YouTube, but I say that, you know, because YouTube is a little bit of a beast, it's my favorite platform, but it is a beast. So I recommend that you start off with, um, IGTV and that's Instagram TV, or you do Facebook and you can pre-record the video for sure, but then don't look at it and go, Oh my gosh, my hair's out of place. Or, oh no, I said that word wrong. Like, I say, so I say again, I say, so again, and I say, um, and I'm probably doing it a lot on this podcast. And guess what? I'm still publishing it. I'm still putting it out there and hopefully you're still listening. So there it is again. So <laughs> uh, no likely blog posts. So some people hate blogging. I'm not a fan of blogging. Uh, you know, so I want to make sure that I, the, what I love to do is to do video. Going live is the fastest way to create content on Facebook, on Instagram. Now you can do it on YouTube and you can engage with your audience, right? I mean, the copy that I wrote in this post in this in my Facebook group actually took me way longer than the actual video took me to make, which is about a three minute video, three and a half minute video on IGTV. Okay. So next time you're struggling with how to market your business, flip the camera on yourself and start sharing helpful advice to your audience. Be genuine, be consistent and be you. And most of all, be patient. All right. That is the final of my top five, my interior design business strategy wrap up for the month. And I'd love to see you comment below. This has been TNT, the Naked Truth podcast. I'm your host, Claire Jefford, bringing you dynamite clarity for your interior design business. And I will see you next time. Bye.